This is Radio 314 on the Red Ice Radio Network. Welcome back to another Radio 314 interview. Susie Wang, the founder of 100% Pure, joins me to discuss her innovative company, which creates outstanding bath, beauty, and hair care products based on pure food-grade ingredients. We'll discuss truth in cosmetics, harmful chemicals, and the alternative. I was inspired to interview Susie since I've had many women writing me asking me about what natural products I use. 100% Pure is on the top of my short list. Welcome, Susie. Thank you for being here today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Lana, for having me. Well, you have a very interesting story leading up to the idea of your company, 100% Pure. So let's take it from the beginning, starting with your geisha grandmother in Japan, your lifestyle while you lived in Japan, and how you ended up in the U.S. Oh, yes. I actually grew up in Japan because my grandmother, um, she became very attached to me. She, when, um, she, when she was younger, she actually had her own daughter. And um, her daughter actually got kidnapped in the market when she was only five years old. Wow. And so um, that's actually my mom's stepmother. And um, so she, she always missed her daughter um, her whole life. She spent her whole life looking for her daughter. And so um, I guess when I was born, I was, um, my, when I was born, um, my mom left me with my grandmother only because my grandmother got so attached to me. And she just loved me so much. So I was raised by her, and uh, we went back and forth from, like, Japan and from Korea. And so, I, you know, I was um, kind of homeschooled, and I was, um, you know, she taught me things like she taught me about nature and to respect nature, and she taught me to, um, you know, like rituals that she herself uh, learned as a young girl. Like, for example, she would... Um, to her yard and pick fresh plums and cherries and lychees and you know peaches and you know, make her own facial masks and uh, I pretty much like uh, started as a, as as young as like five years old um, picking fruits and vegetables and making my own facial masks and creams and things like that for myself. Wow. So in Japan today, is the art of using herbal remedies and treatments still pretty strong, or is it fading out with the more modern, younger generations? Um, I think that it's in the culture to use teas and herbs and vegetables um, and to respect nature. Um, I don't know what it's like right now because I haven't been there in, um, in so many years, but I know that there's a lot... Of, I know that it's just embedded in the culture in general. It's just to be respectful to nature. Mm -hmm. So did you experience any culture shock when you first moved to San Francisco? <laughs> well, not really because I um, always went back and forth visiting my mom. Um, but I, I, it was a different lifestyle because in San Francisco, it's a city. Um, there's a lot more people. Um, whereas... In Asia, I grew up by the mountains and the, you know, country, very um, isolated from everything. So, yeah, it was a different change, but I loved it. I love, I love San Francisco. I love California. That's where we are now, and um, I love it here. Well, while you studied at the University of California at Berkeley, you accidentally discovered your calling. So tell us what happened. Well, I, in college, um, I invented a way to stabilize natural ingredients from oxidizing. So what that means is, um, you know, when you would buy a cream and they would put, let's say, for example, an active ingredient like vitamin C in a cream, mm -hmm. by the time it, would, it was made and by the time you brought it home, the benefit of the vitamin C or the active ingredient it actually goes away. It's that's oxidation, which means that it's just no longer potent. It's no longer working. It's, um, it's useless at that point. So whatever you're putting on your skin, it just loses its benefit, its potency. So in college, I actually found a way to stabilize natural ingredients from oxidizing um, to keep the active ingredients strong, to keep it potent. And so what I did was I actually filed um, patents for it. And when I did that, um, these big companies, they actually reached out to me and said, you know, we are interested in licensing your patent. We're interested in working with you on developing uh, formulas. And so I thought that's amazing. Um, so I dropped out of school 
and decided to do that because it was like a once in a lifetime opportunity for mm-hmm. me. So I ended up doing that for a few years. It's amazing that none of those huge companies with all their resources can make a similar discovery. Instead, they just decide to use toxic chemicals <laughs> as preservatives. Yes, um, exactly. Uh, one of the things that I learned is, you know, when I was formulating for these big companies, I actually had a whole bunch of vials of chemicals. It's just like when you're at home cooking, you have, you know, your in- ingredients on the kitchen table when you're making a dish. So I had a whole bunch of ingredients on the lab table, and I knocked over a vial, and this vial that we were using in an eye cream um, knocked over into the lab table, and within a few minutes, I noticed that the lab table started to degrade, disintegrate. Oh, it started to warp, and I thought, wow, this is crazy. I just put over 15% of this um, chemical in this eye cream to give it thickness. How could it do this? And I started to look into it more. Um, I found out there's a lot of toxic chemicals um, that are used in uh, cosmetics. And that's actually why I decided to leave um, uh, formulating for these large companies. And I wanted to develop something that was more, um, that was purely healthy and without any toxins. Just something that's like, you know, um, no synthetic chemicals, no artificial fragrances, no chemical preservatives, just basically like just healthy, pure products that um, just didn't have any of the toxins that were used. Yeah, and you did it. It can be done. So why do you think these big companies are putting all these chemicals into products? Well, I found out that it was because it was too expensive. For example, um, when we would make, when we would start out by just kind of a sample formula and let's just say I'm just going to use chocolate for example like dark Belgian chocolate and if it's 70% of the actual formula well that they can mimic for example they can just put like half a percent of the real chocolate instead of 70% and then they can instead they can make something that feels like chocolate and looks like chocolate and mm. um, usually they'll use like a thickener like for example most most of the time, they'll use something called a um, PEG, like P-E-G, and then there's like a number behind it, like polyethylene glycol. It's, it's a um, petrochemical that makes that fills up the space. So I think that it has a lot to do with cost. Also, a lot of these chemicals that they're using, what I've been reading, is they're actually created as byproducts of other toxic industries. So it's another way to dispose of them. Yes, that's right. That's actually true. Um, and a lot of that waste comes from, like, the plastic industry. Um, you'd be surprised on how much, like, plastic there is in cosmetics. Liquid plastic, if you can believe it. Because plastic, um, it's like a petrol... They would use a lot of petrochemicals, um, plasticizers, things that you just couldn't imagine that would be in cosmetics they would actually use. For example... I was actually pretty surprised when um, I found out about formaldehyde and being in so many ingredients. Um, Mm -hmm. Formaldehyde, of course, is a preservative to preserve dead bodies. So they're using um, chemicals that that can preserve dead bodies to preserve cosmetics. (laughs) That's crazy. I learned a lot. Like, for example, um, did you even know that, um, you know, people... Consumers just need to be aware and just need to be educated. Like, for example, um, did you know that when, let's say, for example, a cow is butchered, butchered, right, Mm -hmm. Um, slaughtered, and did you know that the the, uh, flesh is rotting right away? So in the slaughterhouse, did you know that they hose it down with a preservative, like a chemical preservative, so that it can last from the slaughterhouse? to the store and then from the store to your kitchen. Oh, geez. Um, people just think that when they're buying meat, for example, they're just getting fresh meat, but that meat was coated with a preservative, for example. A lot of people just like, um, you know, there's, there's just so many toxins and so many things that are dangerous. A lot of people don't know, and especially um, things that are you're applying on your skin, mm-hmm. it's just as much as, it's just as good as eating it because, Truthfully, what you do put on your skin, it actually gets absorbed into your bloodstream. That's, That's right. exactly how um, birth control patches work. 
Mm-hmm. That's how nicotine patches work. Um, that's why uh, I a lot of people think, oh, do I really need to worry about, you know, so what if it's natural? Who cares if I'm putting, you know, toxic ingredients on my skin? It's only on my skin. I can wash it off. Um, that's true. You can wash it off. But certainly um, some of it does get absorbed into your skin. Of course it does. Yeah, I mean, the skin's the largest organ there is. So if you can't eat yes. it and ingest it, why put it on your body? Exactly. We've also spoken a lot on this this program about endocrine disruptors, and but more from a conspiratorial viewpoint addressing why they're being allowed in products. But in your work, have you come across any research about gender benders, as they call them, chemicals, and why you think they're just about in every product there is? I think that chemicals are cheap. For example, um, okay, so, you know, aspirin to get rid of headaches, um, it actually, uh, before they used to use something um, from a plant, the white willow mm-hmm. uh, plant, and people used to, like, uh, chew on them. But it's more expensive to actually plant those herbs rather than, whereas it's cheaper to um, make chemical substitutions that work just the same. I think that it's more expensive to use the real ingredient. That's what I'm finding. And, of course, like large companies, they care the most about profit. So they have to, they would rather, for example, like make, um, make a lot more profit so they would use the chemical version. That's why pharmaceutical companies are selling aspirin versus white willow. Well, shame on them. So tell me also... I mean, we've covered many times the crookedness of the FDA who declares all sorts of harmful toxins as safe. Simultaneously, they don't approve natural products. What has been your interaction with the with the FDA in order to create and sell cosmetics? Well, I know that the, um, the FDA, they actually came to our facility and they actually were very proud of us. You know, the they, they ended up giving us a big hug and thanked us because they actually... They were proud that we're U.S. manufacturers, and they're very happy with what we did. And what they told us, what they told us was that, um, you know, like the so the FDA they allow certain colorants. For example, um, the FDA will allow the use of um, FD and C dyes, mm-hmm. like for example, red dye number forty, blue dye number six, yellow dye number two, or they will allow minerals. To be minerals are um, uh, iron oxides, so oxidized iron. So basically, they will either allow synthetic dyes, FDNC colors, or minerals to be used as colorants. What they had an issue with that they said um, they were concerned with is that we are using rather than um, using dyes or minerals, we actually use fruit and vegetable pigments. So rather than using red dye number 40 or iron oxide, 100% pure is using strawberry pigments, pomegranate pigments, raspberry pigments to color the skin. So they said that, you know, because it's not approved, it's, it's not an FDA-approved colorant, um, although um, that's, that's the only issue is that we're using fruit dyes rather than chemical dyes, mm-hmm. and that was, one, that was like an issue. <laughs> but of funny. course the fruit dyes yeah the fruit dyes are you know they're better for you than minerals of course. Yeah. or better for you than um fd and c dyes uh fruit dyes you know like have you you know when you pick have you ever picked blackberries it's summer now so there's berries out oh um, yeah have you ever picked berries mm-hmm. and you notice when you're picking berries it stains your skin yeah so that's that the the dyes in fruits and vegetables, the colorants, the pigments in fruits and vegetables is the dyes that we use to color 100% pure cosmetics. And um, that's the only thing that the, FD, the FDA said is that, well, those fruit pigments aren't approved by um, the FDA. But because, you know, but honestly, they're not, um, it's obviously fruit and vegetable pigments are not dangerous. So they, they're kind of not bothering us about it. So why won't they approve it? What's the problem? Um, I think it's because no one else uses it, and it's not big enough of a 
market, I think, and um, I'm not really sure why they're not approving it, but we are, we, that's all that we use is fruit and vegetable dyes in our color cosmetics. Yeah, I have to say your foundation is amazing. The foundation makeup, it feels better than anything I've ever used, and it has a nice glow to it, and it comes from flowers and plants. It's amazing. Exactly, and you know, labs, they can actually make the same exact thing with the same exact ingredients. Like, for example, you know, they don't have to use talc. They can use rice starch. They don't have to use artificial dyes. They can use fruit and vegetable pigments. So that's what 100% Pure's goal is. Our mission is to create the absolute most healthy, the most pure line of skincare, bath and body products, and fruit pigmented makeup in the world. Well, you're doing a great job. I, I got to ask, where do your Thank ingredients you. where do your ingredients come from? Um, so our ingredients come from mostly the U.S., um, but there are certain indigenous ingredients, like for example, acai berries. They are only grown in Brazil, and so they're freeze-dried and then um, sent over. And then uh, af- um, our shea butter is from Africa, but we actually are very particular about where we get certain ingredients. So, for example, um, we make sure that it's, there's no slave labor, there's no um, child labor, and that it's helping uh, a village to help the women in Africa mm-hmm. to sustain themselves. So um, our um, our vanilla, uh, 100% pure, uses like fair trade ingredients, organic ingredients. Our vanilla is from Tahiti. Our coffee is from Hawaii. And so we source the absolute best ingredients in the world. And the one thing is, is um, you know, our standards of purity and our standards standards of quality is um, actually by far the most, the most, um, let's see, they're, they're so strict mm-hmm. because, for example, when we get an ingredient in, um, so for example, if we buy green tea, organic green tea, we actually send out the organic green tea leaves to a lab just to make sure that there are no chemical uh, fertilizers or any kind of um, pesticides wow. on them, yeah. and then and then we also of course get the organic certificates, but we just make sure that every raw ingredient um, does not have any pesticides, any kind of chemical fertilizer, and then we test every raw ingredient. We also test the raw ingredients together in the formula because did you know that certain ingredients mixed with certain ingredients they can uh, create toxins. Yeah, of course. Did you know that? Yeah. So, for example, like um, if you're in the kitchen and you're cleaning your kitchen with Windex, you're cleaning the windows with Windex and you're cleaning the sink with Clorox, well, the fumes from the Clorox and the fumes from the Windex, they can actually mix together and make you faint because that creates like a um, a very, very toxic chemical in airborne uh, toxin that can actually kill you. Did you, have you ever heard that before? Yeah, I have. And the other thing is, you know, the FDA likes to say, oh, it's okay in small amounts. But when you think about all the beauty products, then there's the clothing, then there's the things you clean your house with. I mean, everything is polluted. So add all those things together, and then you're getting a nice big daily dose. Yes, that's right. And, you know, the thing is, once, it, once toxins enter your body, it's really hard on your liver and really hard on your kidneys to help clean out all these toxins from your body. That's right. So you do have to, so you have to be careful with all the amount of um, pollution and radiation and all these toxins that we're exposed to. And I have to wonder, you know, why are so many people getting affected with cancer and so many different illnesses? Um, you know, like, you know, when you fly in the air, when you, when you're flying in the air, airplane, um, I even recommend for everyone, don't ever get into one of those um, body scanners, you know, where you, they're scanning your whole body yeah. all around. Yep. And because that emits so much radiation, because you're already getting so much radiation on the plane. So don't, um, don't let anyone, you know, don't let them uh, scan your body with that um, entire body radiation um, scanner. And when you're going to the dentist, 
I never get the x-rays. You know, the ones where you fight down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you need to opt out of all uh, those things. Yeah, opt out of the x-rays for your teeth because the dentist, they can actually physically check. My fiancé, his um, his parents are all doctors, and they, they're the ones who warn me, hey, never, ever, when you go to the dentist, don't ever get, like, the x-rays because it, it, it emits so much radiation. Yeah. People so, put too yeah, much so faith in their doctors. They just do whatever the, the doctor yeah. tells them. Yeah, I mean, like, we're exposed to so much radiation, so much pollutants, so much toxins already through day-to-day life. So try to stay away from any any more than you have to. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, so what I was telling you about the 100% pure is that not only do we test our ingredients for purity, and we test every ingredient together just to make sure that this ingredient with this ingredient is synergistic rather than fighting each other and causing some caustic, um, you know, uh, just like how Clorox and Windex can create something very toxic. Um, So we we test the formulas. We also test the packaging because we want to make sure there's no folate or BPA, which oh, yeah. can be in, um, you know, toxins can even be in packaging. Mm-hmm. Certain um, ingredients can actually make the packaging um, leak out chemicals. So we test for that. And um, we also test for, you know, just like, so we test a lot for, so what I'm trying to tell you is like 100% pure standard of purity and standard of quality, I think is far above um a typical cosmetic brand. And your prices are not high. So the thing is, these these big companies keep saying, oh, bottom line, bottom line. But really, what is the price difference that we're talking about? It can't be that much. You know, oh, it's cheaper to use a chemical. But then here you are using real plants. Actually, um, Lana, it's, it's a huge difference. Like, for mm-hmm. example, if it costs, um, let's say, for example, uh, for us to use, I'm just going to use an example, like a dollar for uh, chocolate, mm-hmm. uh, real pure dark Belgian chocolate. Uh, it could co- cost uh, two cents to use polyethylene glycol. It's a huge difference. Jeez. <laughs> yes, it is a huge difference. Wow. I wanted to ask you also about getting the organic seal. What kind of process do you have yes. to go through? Um, we're actually in the process of going through that right now, and um, it seems very uh, straightforward and very easy. They're, all they're going to do is, because we have on record all our certified organic certificates, and so we just collect them, and I think that all they're, they're going to do is just come over and check our facilities and watch us make it, and I think that's how they're going to issue it. Um, someone's currently working on getting us uh, USC certified organic for everything for mo- for our skincare first um, to start off with. Some of our things are certified organic, and then we're just working on trying to get more. Hmm. Yeah, and there's also a lot of phony organic products out there. They're really hitting the market pretty hard right now with the trendy green movement. Haven't you noticed? Yes, I just feel that um, you know people are calling things natural or organic because it just seems like. They think that's a trend, but really, um, for us, it's not just a trend. It, it's really because we know that toxins are very dangerous, and so um, I don't know if people think that maybe it's just trendy right now, and that's just. But I, to me, it's just um, more than a trend. It's dangerous. That's why. Also, to understand the process of what you go through, how easy it is, is it to make beauty products directly from someone's garden? Let's say. Oh, oh! you know what? Um, you can do so many things with nature. I, you know, we have a well and at our house, and the well emits so much calcium, and so we had a lot of calcium buildup in our shower heads. You know what I did is I just, cu- I went to my yard, and I picked a lemon, and I used the lemon and just kind of rubbed over my, um, like, my faucet and all my hardware in my kitchen and in my bathroom, mm-hmm. and it just made it shiny, like brand new. Um, you can do so much with things in your garden. I go into my yard and I pick strawberries and I'm mashing them up and I mix it with yogurt and honey and, my, and I make my own scrub. Um, you know, nature is the best thing that you can do. The only thing is is that 
it's just harder to preserve. For example, um, our preservative, we use Japanese honeysuckle, and it's this uh, powerfully antibacterial um, plant-based preservative, um, but it's, it's a lot more expensive than, for example, paraben. Um, we use oregano, thyme, um, golden seal. We use a lot of antibacterial, like rosemary, uh, antibacterial herbs. Um, and as you can imagine, like uh, rosemary, oregano, thyme, um, they're a lot more expensive than chemical formaldehyde, for example. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, somewhere you also mentioned that you don't sell products in China because they require all products to be tested on animals. Did I hear that right? Oh, oh, that is absolutely right. I mean, 100% pure. We are such um, animal lovers. We, I mean, me personally, I grew up vegan. Uh, I don't want to ever eat meat because I don't want to hurt animals. Um, so 100% pure, we're, we're really, really popular, and we're really, we have this huge fan base in China. Um, people from China travel to California to our retail stores, and they're stuffing their suitcases with 100% pure products. And um, it's interesting, like, so many people they, they, in China, our products are so popular, and we, we will not register in China because... If you register your products in China, they re- China requires that you um, you animal test, <laughs> and so we would rather forego animal test. I mean, we would rather forego profits than to participate in animal testing. Of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, some of the things that's happening in China it just makes me disgusted. Like, um, you know, in China they actually. Um, they would actually go to private homes and catch dogs and cats, pri- you know, private uh, residences, and kidnap people, dogs and cats, and they would actually rip out their fur, and Jeez. they would use the fur for um, makeup brushes. That's why 100% pure makeup brushes are all vegan because people don't realize when I'm wearing when I'm when I'm using my blush brush, people don't realize that they're actually using squirrel or mink or fox, um, you know, an animal had to go through so much suffering. And um, the way that fur is extracted from animals is so inhumane. It's so cruel. Do you know that they actually rip out the skin when the anim- while the animal is alive? I did not know that. They don't even, they do not even, Lana, um, they do not even have the decency to actually um, put the animal out of its misery before ripping out the fur. Wow. Um, they actually, yes, I mean, it's just it's these horrific. People, so that's these why, people are psychotic. <laughs> yeah, they actually would uh, rip out the fur from an animal while it's alive, and the animals are just screaming. So these in China, like what these, farmer, these fur farmers would do is they would actually drive around and go into private residences and pick up, um, you know, catch, like, uh, people's pets, and they would stuff them into cages and I saw these pictures of like dogs their nose being cut by the cage because they're pushed into the cage so far and so with it's so packed in there and yeah it's it's so sad um so think about that ladies when you're using your makeup brushes (laughs) so please always like please ban fur um please do not support fur and even when you're buying makeup brushes please do not use fur do not buy fur makeup brushes or fur coats. Or just know that, like, um, the animals, they're crying out in pain. And they're actually, there's a lot of videos out there, Lana, like, um, where the they would actually um, hit the animal, like the baby fox. They would hit the baby fox or, or baby dog um, with a bat and then just rip up Ugh. the fur. Yeah, I can't watch that stuff. It'll just stay in my mind. It's horrible. Yeah. So do you ever I'm see that? We're supposed to be talking about <laughs> being a, excited and talking okay. about like, animal cruelty. I'm just yeah. so passionate about animals. Um, that's why our company, 100% Pure, we're always so charitable. Um, we donate a lot to animal charities um, to help really, even the um, 
we're, we're currently right now started a petition to try to get uh, China to stop animal testing um, to make to help make it illegal. Um, we started a petition on that. Um, we're, our company is just very active with um, helping animals because that's just our passion. So do you ever see the beauty industry ever changing and not using all these chemicals? Um, I really hope to see more and more of it. I'm seeing, like I said earlier, I, I feel that a lot of cosmetic companies are starting to stop using parabens because they're finally realizing that parabens, um, they're finding... The, the big controversy with parabens is that um, when women had uh, breast cancer and they actually dissected the tumors and they found the parabens in the tumors. And so I'm seeing less and less um, of the use of parabens, but I still see it out there all the time. Um, I just think that it, the consumers need to make the choice. Consumers, if we're constantly supporting these companies and they're still using these toxins that are dangerous for us, then I think that they'll continue to um, use these dangerous chemicals. And the only way to get them to stop is to not support them anymore. That's right. It amazes me that people still buy all this harmful junk and support these companies. I don't know what they're thinking. And the other thing is if you support these companies, then you're not giving business to the little companies that are producing the alternative, like... 100% 100% pure. Oh, thank you so much. It's, it really is, uh, besides animals, um, my biggest, my other biggest mission is, you know, I just, it made me sad when companies are selling a product to all these women and they, and it's known that these chemicals are dangerous and that these chemicals are toxic um, and carcinogens. It's, so it's baffling to me. It's just like if, if people know that cigarettes are, are bad, but they kept pushing them and, and denying that it was bad, you know, many decades ago. Um, now there's regulation that they have to put the um, warning warnings on all the cigarettes. But it's just like if people know that something's bad for people, how can you sell, sell a product without it just... It, it really baffles me. Yep. It's like selling something or producing something that's just so bad for people. How can you... I, I just would never be able to live with myself. Well, karma comes around, so they'll get it. And so will the people that work at these companies and support that. I, I That's actually why I, you know, it was very... During the times when I did a formulate for these large companies, it was very lucrative because I received royalties. And so... When I made a product, for example, when I um, created something and it was launched, it was launched in thousands and thousands of stores, um, in department stores all around the world, and I would receive 3 to 7% um, royalties. So every time someone would buy something and if it's $100, I would actually receive $3 or $7 for each sale. It was very, very lucrative, and actually a lot of friends have told me, oh, you're making a big mistake because, you know, you're, you have such a good living doing this, but I just couldn't do it because I knew that I, once I started learning about all the, how dangerous some of the chemicals were in cosmetics, I just couldn't continue. Yep, absolutely. And I don't know how you feel on this subject, but I also feel some of these toxins, they carry a different vibration with them. And, and that comes through in the ingredients, it comes through in the, in the intention, and then you're putting yes. also that on yourself. Which, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, that's why, yeah, no, I mean, the ingredient, certain ingredients, mixed with certain ingredients can be bad ingredients. Like, for example, um, potassium sorbate and sodium benzoate with vitamin C actually uh, creates benzene, which is also a known toxin. Mm-hmm. So certain ingredients mixed with certain ingredients, it does absolutely cause negative effects. I That's why that. with 100% pure, we always uh, test the formula just to make sure every ingredient in the formula is cohesive and can work synergistically together. Mm, that's excellent. Now, you've also been working on a clothing line. Did I hear that right? Oh, no, I mean, that is just more uh, really just been a hobby. Um, It's not something, you know, skincare is a specialty. It's what we do best. 
it's what we know. Um, we so our focus is always on skincare, um, but we do you know make a few accessory type of things in clothing, um, like t-shirts and uh, slippers. We even actually developed a software called Inkville. Mm -hmm. um, I N C V I L L E. Um, it's actually an online cloud-based software to help companies work better together. So, for example, like we have about um, 75 employees, and some of our teammates are in Los Angeles because we have a store in Los Angeles. Some of our teammates are in Berkeley, um, at our store in Berkeley or at our store in the San Francisco airport or at our San Jose retail store in Santana Row. So everybody's kind of spread out so that we created Inkville so that we can all collaborate together so everybody knows what's going on in the company, um, where I can keep track of all my projects. Um, so we have we have actually worked on many different projects. Um, for example, I'm even working on um, a nonprofit for animals. Um, but our core business, the thing we do best, the the, the, that the specialty is skincare. That's our specialty and fruit pigments and cosmetics. That's, that's what we do best. That's what, so that's our focus. So if someone were to use your products over time, do you think they could heal their skin? Oh, of course. Yes, because your skin, you know, our bodies, we're designed to, um, you know, we're designed to heal and our, our bodies can heal itself. Um, so give it, you know, give it the right nutrients. It's just like your body can heal. Just give your body the right amount of water, you know, enough water to give it the right nutrients, and your body can really heal itself. Um, that's what our immune system is designed to do. So our skin care, really, you know, all you need to do is just love your skin, don't pollute it with toxins. Take good care of your skin. Um, and, of course, it can heal itself. Now, what are your thoughts on, on being out in the sun? Um, for me personally, um, of course, the sun gives you some vitamins. But I, I'm a huge advocate to say that I stay out of the sun because the sun is the number one uh, cause of aging. Um, the sun has, when you're on the sun, um, of course, you have the ultraviolet burning rays and you have the ultraviolet aging rays. And um, they, the sun causes uh, wrinkles. The sun ca causes the um, elastin in your skin to break down uh, so that it forms wrinkles and sagging. And the sun also causes age spots. Um, the sun can also cause skin cancer. So, um, you know, I love nature. I love going out on hikes, and I love going to the beach. But I would just say, um, you know, go outdoors and have fun, but wear, wear some sunblock or wear a wide brimmed hat, wear gloves when you're driving. You protect yourself from the sun. I've been making my own sunscreen because, you know, sunscreen is just full of all kinds of bad stuff. But with zinc powder, yes. just mixing that up with some essential oil and a, a carrier oil, yeah. and it works fantastically. Yes. That is right. If you can get, for example, so our sunblock, they're all zinc oxide based. And what zinc oxide is, is, okay, so there's two different types of sunblocks. The chemical sunblock, what it does is it absorbs your, it absorbs the UV rays. And kind of, um, it, it just does, it's the chemical sunblock, they absorb the UV rays. Now, the zinc oxide based sunblock, that's more like it, it when you're, when the sun hits your skin, it, it makes it bounce off. It's like a, it's like wearing a jacket over your face. It's like wearing uh, clothing over your skin. The zinc oxide is a physical block. It actually, what that, that literally means that it physically blocks it. It's like if you were wearing a zinc oxide based sunblock, it's like wearing a sweater over your your face. It's physically blocking it. So those I think are much zinc oxide uh, based sunblocks are much healthier for you, and I think uh, more effective. 
As we begin to wrap up, what are some of your favorite plants to work with and what are some of their health benefits? Well, in your garden, you should have an aloe plant because um, sometimes just uh, when your skin's feeling dehydrated, crack open the um, aloe and the gooey part, um, use it like a mask, apply a thick layer all over your face, and it just really helps with eczema and helps soothe your skin. If you've got a little sun, it helps cool sunburn. It's very hydrating. Um, in your garden, you should also have lemons because lemons you can use to clean your house instead of using a harsh chemical uh, cleaners. I like to use lemon water to clean my sinks and, um, you know, uh, counters. Um, I also like to use, uh, I have an herb garden, so every day I make my fiancé um, herbal tea. I just kind of cut out, I just sniff up some, mint, all the different types of mints and different herbs, and I brew hot water and put a little bit of honey and lemon. Um, I, I love having a garden full of different things, like different berries, citrus, herb and uh, you can just use it for your skin use it for your household good household cleaning um, you can use it for uh, cooking I just love to be around nature so I, I in my garden I have just about I have almost everything growing well Susie thank you for your time today I hope you keep this up for many years thank you so much Lana I really appreciate it I love speaking with you and to your audience 100percentpure.com is a website where you'll find skincare, bath and body, makeup, and even something for the kids, men too. Remember, there's always an alternative. Take care.